risk sitting on this log. Hope there's no ticks here. I hate ticks. <laughs> it's funny. Normally I'm just carefree. I sit down all over the place, hiking the woods non-stop. I don't really think about it too much. Then as soon as you see one, they're everywhere, right? <laughs> I hate ticks. Quick note on what I'm doing here, you guys, and the messages I'm getting across. Remember way back in the beginning, you know, when I first made it public online, and I was very familiar with these things. A few things going on in the woods. Um, basically, three quarters of the Bigfoot Sasquatch community were uh, contacting me and asked me to join them and asked me to go on their podcast and asked me to do this and asked me to do that and assuring me they're going to share some information that may have been kept guarded of people who had absolute evidence and even body parts, et cetera, et cetera. I was gonna go out of my way and go across the border to go see these people, meet up with them. Um, COVID came up, blocked that. And uh, other people were getting through these other contacts were talking to me on the, on the sly, were telling me that some of these other people were a little gun shy of sharing the evidence with me to share through me with the people, and et cetera, et cetera. But, Either or is fine with me. I'm not really, I'm not really overly that concerned now. At the stage of the game. Um, but if you haven't quite figured it out yet, I am 100% confident that I have delivered absolute evidence of the reality of what's going on out here. Um, like a friend of mine recently said to me this past weekend, who has my book, and I've never heard him speak on this topic before, but he's a very intelligent man. And he said, basically flat out, he said, just the sheer numbers of the people sharing experiences without a doubt proves what's going on out there. For somebody to be that distrustful of their brothers and sisters and their society to allow their brains to automatically block and discredit, what now? 50, I'll bet you I have 15,000 people from around the world have emailed me. 15,000. Can you imagine what it would take to coerce 15,000 people to make up a story which is absolutely similar, similar in, in such intimate details of their encounter with each other around the world without being connected and report those, those experiences to the world through me to all you? Could you imagine? It's impossible. The proof's in. Um, and that is why I've said from day one, after sitting on the fence, watching the shit show, yes, I've said it before, but there are thousands of new subscribers here nonstop. The people who publicly nonstop say, we're looking for evidence, we're going to prove it. We're getting the evidence, we're going to prove it. We've got our pheromone chips, we've got our trail cameras, we've got our gifting spots, we're going to prove it. Unfortunately, 100% of you people that carry that theme in your words on to the public you are keeping this topic going in a circle it's all you're doing and i am the asshole that's going to have to say it out loud to you and you can either take that as possibly a new angle to look at what you're doing or you can have a little hissy fit and think it's a direct insult to you and be a sniveler take your pick um, no i'm not about people's feelings when you're worried about people's feelings then truths easily get hidden and people get misled and people start doing and saying what's acceptable I don't give a shit about what's acceptable. You either suck it up and understand the facts, listen to the tens of thousands of people that are speaking out loud, and advance in your intelligence, or just get out of here. <laughs> just go away. Go back on that side of the street and keep doing your donuts through your whole lifetime, not getting anywhere, and just, just stay away. All right? There's nothing here for you, and there's nothing you have of, that has interest to me. All right? I don't care if I sound like a dick saying that. Maybe you think I am, maybe you think I don't. But believe me, when the messenger comes out and tells the obvious facts, lots of people love to shoot the messenger, right? But once again, this messenger shoots back, okay? So it's been proven. It has been proven. It is real. This is really going on. All, all this crazy ass shit is going on. It's a fact of our existence today, all right? So hopefully the sooner the majority of everybody accepts those facts, then they can start moving ahead to the next level to find out why. Find out why 
we're not being taught these facts as children? Why are we being manipulated? Why, why, why? Right? My puzzle's really getting full. Uh, there's been a very, a lot of very intelligent people have come forward through me to share with you and have shared with me uh, privately. And the information that I've been acquiring for my puzzle is really starting to fill that sucker in. But unfortunately, it it makes you go beyond just this topic of Sasquatch. It goes to a very mind-boggling topics and directions and rabbit holes, you might call them. And uh, our existence here on this planet is absolutely mind-boggling. The amount of energy and money put forward to keep 100% of us in the fog is absolutely alarming. I find myself quite worried about it, actually. When you see, when, what do they call you? you when you're woke, is it what it's called? You're woke? <laughs> I like to say it's when the point you get to see through the bullshit very clearly. Um, it's a hell of a, it's, an hell, it's one hell of an effort putting forward to keep our heads in the holes. And I want to know why. Why do humans... Why does somebody or some place or some beings or whoever it is, why do they need the majority of human beings, the human race, to be dumbed down so fiercely? Why? If there is a devil, if there is a Satan, he owns mainstream media. 100%. 100%. So, anyways, we'll keep smashing forward with the truth, see how long I can last on here in this public forum. <laughs> Because it's people that speak out the truth and go against the narrative they deliver to all of you or who gets shut up these days. They do not want anyone speaking the truth about anything. It's just they want us to keep our heads to the ground, keep fighting with each other. The mainstream media is 100% creating and promoting racism, which is the easiest tool to keep all of us divided and all of us stupid and all of us fighting. They're promoting it on a ridiculous level. You imagine if all of us, you imagine if everybody across the board just decided to stop fighting with each other one day. Everybody's like, everybody just shook their head, looked at each other, went, what the hell are we doing? There's nobody pulling blatant racism on each other. We're, we're getting manipulated to go against each other and call every each other a racist and fight with each other and hate each other. Could you imagine if every single person across the board who's screaming racism and cre screaming hate instantly threw the towel in held hands, and became one solid, strong force. You imagine what that would do to society. Now seriously, picture that one. Picture what would happen if every single one of you, all of us, stopped hating each fighting each other and joined forces and put an end to the hate. Just think of what that would do to mainstream people, mainstream media and the people that control everything. Imagine what that would do. Take a look at it from that angle, all right? Just sit there and daydream with yourselves for a little bit. And picture what would happen to society if all the little people stopped fighting with each other over stupid bullshit. Picture it. Just entertain that thought for five minutes and picture what would happen. And then when you do picture it, then you'll start to clearly see that somebody, some extreme monster narcissist, wants you to keep squabbling with each other. And that is a fact. I would stake my life on it in a heartbeat. Picture it. Just picture it from that angle for a little bit and see what you come up with, all right? Now, getting on some of the emails while the tick probably crawls up my back and makes a nest in the crack of my ass. <laughs> what do we got? Master preview. Cougar stalking. All right. Let's have a listen. Hi, Steve. My name is Jim. You've read a couple of emails previously. Two quick notes first and then on to the actual subject of this email. Number one, November 69, elk hunting at the south end of the Porcupine Hills in southwest Alberta, about 25 miles west of Fort McLeod. My dad and my two uncles heard a very loud, unnerving scream while roasting rough grouse over an open fire. I missed the scream as I was down the side of the ridge in the timber collecting firewood. Nobody could figure out what could have made the scream. On a side note, at age 10 in 1962, this location was where I was first introduced to hunting by my dad. This is big open range country and everything and very tiring for a 10 year old huge tracks of grassland and coolies leading to high country covered in massive tracks of douglas fir made for great elk and deer range got my first mule deer whitetail and bull elk in these hills number two november 93 hanging by myself about a mile northwest of the previous incident 
Just before sunrise, I'm hunting along the top of a ridge when a howling starts about a mile to the southwest of me. Not a coyote or wolf, not a lost cougar hound. The howling went for about an hour, then suddenly quit. This is way back in the Porcupine Forest Reserve, so no ranches back there. Never figured it out till a few years ago when I listened to the Ohio Howl. This is very close, at least as close as my memory is able to recall. Number three, the actual subject of this email. It was November 2001, same location again, and within a mile of previous two stories. My buddy Dave, who doesn't hunt, came along with me for the hike and to push a few draws for him, as he would find out. <laughs> So about four miles in, we stopped for lunch at an open slope just before the ridge crest. Dave brought lunch, salmon, sandwiches. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but cats love fish, right? So we're eating lunch when I get zapped from behind. My head snaps around like a 180, like the Exorcist movie, and just emerging from the draw behind us on a game trail is a very big, healthy cougar, about 30 yards away and staring intently at us. This trail was the same one we used to get there. I believe he was tracking us. I immediately jump to my feet and quickly tell Dave to stand up and get a load of this. The cat barely hesitates, then starts walking down towards us. He's totally unafraid of us and at about 25 feet from us starts circling. I told Dave, raise your arms and let's start yelling. The cat never acknowledged any of her antics. In fact, he maintained a 25 foot radius circle and into the start of the second circle, Dave, who is not armed and doesn't even own a firearm, says, what are you going to do? My reply was, he's got about one more minute. At that point, I figured that he was trying to get one of us or both to break and run. I also noticed he was starting to tighten the circle. It's decision time, and I decided to end this stupid game right there. It's obviously something abnormal with him. If cats have nine lives, he used all nine in about one three thousandths of a second. Dave, being unarmed, was very hesitant that afternoon to carry, to carry on the pushing of the draws for me after I found a sound stick for him to carry. You can't blame him, I guess. He's gone with me several times since, but only if I supply a weapon. Lesson learned. Steve, on your video today, April 20, 2021, you mentioned not getting a threatened feeling from a bear or cat. Well, I definitely got a zap from behind when that cat broke over the berm. I didn't feel extreme danger, but something nailed me in the back of the head and told me to get ready right now. Talked to the local ranch rancher back of the truck, which was parked outside the forest reserve on a ranch trail. Asked him if he had a lot of cougar in the area. If he replied, too goddamn many. You see one, shoot it. Apparently he had been having lots of predation on his stock. Steve, you are greatly appreciated for providing this open forum with no condemnation or prejudgment. Another 4x4 just went by. I guess it's Sunday, Saturday today? I guess there's lots of people out in the back country here. Steve, you are greatly appreciated for providing this open forum with no condemnation or prejudgment. Free speech definitely lives here. Thanks again for all you do. It's invaluable. Jim Barkley, you are welcome, man. Thank you for sharing. You've shared a few times now. That's funny. Uh, I actually had a cat when I was 17 or 18. It sounds like a bit of a story, but I literally had my bow in front of me, bullet full draw, kicking snow in the face of a big cat. And he did the same thing. Came up the snowy trail with the wind in his face, knew exactly what we were. And he came bouncing up and uh, had my bullet full draw, screaming at it, just kicking snow at it. I should have shot it. And then, uh, and then he was just eyeing up the two of us and uh, another guy that was with me is a lot smaller than me. And he was eyeing up the situation, deciding what he was going to do. And then he turned around and walked away with attitude. And then I let an arrow fly and it just went under his belly. Anyway, then... Uh, but a week later, went back there again and there was the remnants of a spike buck kill he had back down the trail his direction about another 30 yards 40 yards so i guess what he was doing he was feeling a little protective of his kill so there is a chance that cat that you saw might have had a kill back there you never know but as far as getting zapped in the back of the head i think that's just our sixth sense i don't think it's there zapping us it's ours it's our intuition it's our sixth sense that, that warns us i'm 100 percent convinced of that for myself i'm not going to dictate it everybody's going to learn for themselves right but that's what i think Hey Steve, I hope I have the right email address this time. I sent another one to the Pro Guys 66 one. Anyway, a buddy of mine took a picture of what looks like a gorilla with a skull on its head and giant shoulders and legs, mean and dirty. 
There's not a lot of size context in the pic, but there's trees around. This is from Belmont County, extreme eastern Belmont near Wheeling, West Virginia. My buddy was on a horse. All I know is that his horses were spooked at his place, too. His name is Oakley. My name is Jim. There are things out there. I believe the guy who said that some people see him, some don't. Never had a serious encounter. I've had several friends tell me about encounters they've had. Rock throwing, in the garbage, howling, tree knocking, dogs and pets disappear. I'll try to get it to load up. It's a great picture. Share away. Okay, man, I'll share it. And uh, you know what he might want to do? Whoever took this photo, they might want to go back there with a buddy and squat down right there where this image is and take a picture from the exact same spot of a human being sitting there too. Be interesting, but... That's a bit of a creepy photo for sure. Not as a creepy one. I've never seen this one before. Maybe somebody has. Very interesting. You can see his knuckles and stuff. And of course, there's always going to be the comedian like me is going to say it looks like he's squatting, taking a dump. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for sending that, man. Thanks for that share. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll see what everybody has to say in the comment section below, I guess. Hey Steve, been watching on YouTube for a few months now, and I have to say it has brought me some peace. Right on. That's freaking good word. I love reading those words. Hearing some of the stories made me realize that I'm not the only one that has had weird things happening. Let me say first that I did not see a Bigfoot. I learned to hunt at an early age, even though I grew up in Southern California. I quit hunting over 30 years ago, but never lost the need to spend time in the forest. So I typically would spend a couple weeks a year running around exploring the wilderness in Oregon and California. A number of years ago, I was in Oregon in the Sisters area, early December. I pulled down this fire road and found a nice spot to spend the night and explore the area the next day. I liked to be set up before dark, but it was running late. It was getting dark, and I was rushing around making dinner and trying to get settled. I'd been out over a week, and I was feeling great. I had some music on, and have to say, pretty loud. I'd never do that if I thought anyone was in the area. But like I said, I was back there for over a week and never saw anyone. I love that. I finished and decided to go quiet, turning the music off, put my dog in my car, grabbed my bottle of whiskey and was about to sit down and relax. But I heard the tree, a tree breaking and looked up the hill and saw what looked like the top of a tree maybe a hundred yards away, moving back and forth, snapping and popping the whole time. I could barely make it out, but it looked like it changed direction four or five times. I never saw anything like that and scared the hell out of me. It went on for several seconds. I collapsed onto my chair with my mind running about 100 miles an hour trying to analyze what the hell could do that. I finally told myself there had to be a bear. What else could it be? Even though it didn't make any sense in several ways. Another case of mind over matter. I was not leaving but decided I was sleeping in the car tonight. Sat up for about an hour and of course had several swigs from that bottle of whiskey. Jumped into the passenger seat with my bag and quickly went to sleep. Woke up to what sounded like a loud thump. I think I felt, but I'd been asleep and I thought I dreamed it, but looked back at my dog and she was looking out the back window. She turned and jumped into my lap shaking, needless to say I didn't get any more sleep. The next day I went for a little hike, I had to get out, I had to get, I had to get a look at that tree, I got about a hundred feet from it and saw that it was six to eight inches in diameter and it was broken. The fear overwhelmed me with the thought, a bear cannot do that. I got back to my car and drove all the way home to San Diego, but that's just the beginning. I lived in a house that was over a hundred years old and then had some noises that I never noticed before. The two times had little lights like lightning bugs. Now I know orbs, but really didn't want to put too much thought into it. I'm Christian and believe it's playing with a Ouija board. You never know what you're going to get. Fast forward nine years, moved into a senior community that was built in the 60s. So there's been a lot of people in death in those places. Been here about 10 months. I wasn't here a week, and I thought I saw something out of the corner of my eye to go behind a pair of boots about six feet away from me. Got up thinking a lizard got in. Nothing there. Since then, I've had several instances of what best describes it as like the movie Predator. Small at ground level, the shimmer as if you're looking down a hot road, along with noises that don't make sense. I didn't know what to make of it, but after hearing some of your emails with some of the same types of things, it makes me wonder if it could be tied together. I don't talk to people about any of this. I talked to my son about a few things. He's, he didn't say it, but he, the look on his face said, You too, oh dad, might be staring down the road. Might be starting down the road of grandpa. Alzheimer's. Don't think so. I'm pretty rational and notice things. 
that others don't, but we don't know what we don't know. Thanks for the peace and keep up the work. Pretty sure I, I read that one, you guys. Oh well, you got to hear it again. <laughs> for free. <laughs> Thanks for sending that in. It's too bad when family writes people off as being nuts, isn't it? Alright, what do we got? Hopefully I haven't read this one. Hi Steve, want to say I really enjoy your stories, the scenery, and your words of wisdom. Thanks for the kind words, man. My story, it was last year, May 2020, where I lived up on the ridge overlooking mountains in the town of Orkney Springs. It's beautiful. I haven't been there that long, and it still thrills me when I stop out of my home and see the lovely views and see nature at its finest. It took us years after working and raising kids to get here. We have a sweet golden doodle dog that is older, and she has health issues. Having a seizure once every few months and various allergies is a challenge with having her in her life. I'm going to stop for a second. got to hear this song bird here. I love these birds. Listen. Isn't that great? I can listen to that all day long. She is a delight, though. Happy, loyal, and sweet. I call myself her service human. I joke I should wear the vest. Unfortunately... Unfortunately, in the wee hours of the morning, usually time for seizures, she was upstairs sleeping outside my daughter's room. And when the seizure hit, she must have got up to come down the stairs. But then she toppled down the stairs and fell into a pair of large pictures as seen against the wall, waiting to be hung. Lord, what a commotion at 3 a.m. So then, heart pounding, we all run to her, and watching her go through that is really tough to watch. That sucks. She was a mess. I cleaned her up as best I could, and she said, and said, we'll bathe her later, and we went back to bed. Later that afternoon, I took her for a small walk to see how she was doing before I tried bathing her. You don't want to cause them any more trauma. She does not like being bathed. She was still a little caked with vomit and blood. She cut her mouth up. That probably sounds worse than she looked. We both needed something to distract, distract us, and it was a beautiful sunny day. The reason I give you so much backstory is because I wonder what made that day different from all the other days when we would take the walks on the road. Their houses on the road, in the woods mostly, and spread out. Some people are on the last few acres up to, or some people are on lots, a few acres up to over a hundred. Not too many people live here full time, but it's not uncommon to have a car pass you or someone out walking too. The first thing I noticed strained was something quite large and fast running off to our right behind a house, a few houses down from us. Then, after walking a little bit more, I. St- stopped and for some reason I looked to my left into someone's treed property. I could see pretty good sized trees and something standing next to a tree staring at us. The weird thing is that it looked like it had the head of a dog, large pointed ears and a snout. It was a light cream color and it looked like it was standing on two legs, sort of hiding, but noticeable. It just kept staring at us. I kept staring back. My dog did not notice it. I think she was still a little out of it. It was not a deer, it was too tall. It wasn't a bear, I'm pretty sure they're black in our area. I do not know they're light-colored black bears. I think this thing was trying to figure out whether to attack us or not. My mistake was walking a dog that smelled like blood, like him swimming in the ocean with blood in the water. I decided to keep moving on, then I thought, what the hell, get back home. I quickly crossed the road and started heading back. When I looked over the road, looked, when I looked over across the road to where it had been, I no longer saw it. I didn't hear anything else either. I've never seen it since, and I keep wondering what I saw. I think we are both very lucky. I don't remember if I had some sort of weapon on me. I don't remember if I had some sort of weapon on me. I usually do, but I think I was lulled by the beauty of the day, and I wasn't going far. Stay safe, everyone. Lori in Virginia. I can't believe how many of these frickin' dogman sightings there are. There is a lot. And, uh... I said it before, I'm not, a, I'm not even a beat around the bush about it, man. If I got my 300 with me, and I'm in the woods by myself, and I see something, whatever they are, I don't give a shit how tall it is. If I see something standing like a man with pointed ears and a canine head and claws, and it's looking at me, I'm not, I'm not even going to freaking deny it for a second. I'm going to put a hole in that sucker's head. I just am. 
if it's an innocent, friendly, frickin' canine human, well, I don't know. Maybe wag your tail and let out a friendly little bark. <laughs> I don't know, but I'll tell you what. Uh, wild dogs, wolves have never really been our friends since time to, been since time began. They've been our competition, and they are, by nature, very efficient killers, right? Wolves are very efficient killers. So are jackals, so are hyenas, so are dingoes, coyotes. Um, if there's any natural predator that's staring you down for more than a few seconds, it's not doing it because he's wondering if you're going to give him a belly rub or not, right? On average. That's just the way it is out here in the wilds, in the natural real world. That's the way it is. If I were to sneak up on and stare at a grizzly bear, lock my eyes on it, it's going to see me as a threat stalking. It's going to come and beat the shit out of me or kill me or possibly run, right? You never, predators know that, it's number one rule. You do not lock your eyes on anything and stare it down unless you're looking for business, right? Also goes in human world, try it. Go to any, go to some, go to some pub or bar, pick out a, pick out the biggest, nastiest looking dude there and start staring at him, see what happens. That's right, it's probably, the end result's not gonna be too good, right? It's just, that's, that's nature's rule number one. You lock your eyes on anything, it's never good. The outcome's not good, and it's typically perceived as 100% of a threat. So, if anybody gets upset that I say I'm going to pump a hole through a dog man's head if I see it staring at me, oh well, it is what it is, but that is the way it is on this end, I'm telling you right now. Howdy, I'm a senior citizen, but have kept up with the Bigfoot since it hit the media. One time I heard something suspicious. Is when I was out in my rural property one afternoon and heard the knocking together of two sticks, and it was close. I knew it wasn't a woodpecker, so it was too loud. I'm an outdoors woman, thanks to my father who brought me up with a BB gun in one hand and a fishing pole in the other. Okay, I've only heard those knocks one time. No one lives in the property. It's all woodland and a big pond. You know, one time, my friend and I were fishing from the pier, and suddenly we heard animal noises, which were not familiar. It sounded like something killed a wild hog up the stream that leads into the pond. It went on and on and on. There were two distinct aggravating fighting animals. We quietly gathered up our gear and left since we were about 75 yards from the woods where sounds were coming from. In either case, it could or could not have been Bigfoot. If I lived out there, I'd probably have more to share. Now here's my main reason for writing. Why is it I see all these rare pictures of lions, monkeys, etc., and they are clear as a bell? Why are the pictures that folk post mostly blurry and not at all that exciting? Things need to change in order to photograph or video a big BF. Why hasn't professional outdoor photographers gone in the hot spots and tried to capture him slash her in the clearing? Someone needs to develop a new technique to approach the situation. I try to run scenarios through my head as to find a way to get the absolute proof that BFs are roaming just about everywhere. Thanks for reading. I've been wanting to share this with some one for a long time, and you're the right man. Be safe in your coming and goings. Regards, Miss Elliot. Miss Elliot, thank you very much for going out of your way to share with us and ask a question. The only thing I can offer up as to why these photographs and videos are not being pulled off is because possibly, I mean, after, you have, after you've been forced to accept the reality with these damn things, then you start to figure out why our technology, the level that we're, the public, the, the public's, the public technology we're allowed to have access to just isn't good enough. It's just the way, it's just the way it is. The, our camera technology that we're allowed to have obviously is just not good enough. Our cameras are missing something yet that possibly hasn't been discovered or it has been discovered, is being utilized, but we're not allowed to have it. That's a big, big possibility, right? But that's the only reason I can come up with as to why the trail cameras, the photographers, the people with vehicle cameras aren't quite getting consistent, clear video photographs of this shit that's going on. And I am, the only reason right now I come up with that makes sense is that our technology we're allowed to play with right now isn't good enough obviously it's just not good enough we're missing something and i don't know what it is because obviously i'm not into the develop i'm not a developer of different cameras and trail cameras and i just don't know anything about it 
do we need something that is programmed to record at a different vibration is is made to record energy at di or possibly made to record different energy vibrations through a lens possibly maybe that's it right i don't know obviously thermals work thermals have worked thermals have been working numerous times that's pretty good but thermals aren't really a clear photographic lens are they but that's all i can come up with What do we got? Here's another one. <clears throat> the guy that sent you the email named Adam that mentioned communication with the forest people. That has been my exact experience in two locations, Pensacola, Florida, and 2,200 miles away in Tacoma, Washington. Only very recently have I put any research or energy towards Bigfoot or Sasquatch. But my experiences with forest people forced, forced me. I'm just saying that the dude's not lying. It's absolutely for real. There is some kind of culture that's underneath or right beside us that we don't usually have conscious access to. And he's right about the staring. That's how you communicate. That's how you break through the seal. It's freaking weird. They can follow you home. They can take different forms. They have a lot in common and slash are usually mixed up with Bigfoot or Sasquatch or maybe even they're all three the same. My experiences being mostly with forest people. But the more I'm learning about the Bigfoot phenomenon, they really, really blend into the same thing. But I've never heard forest people before today until you mentioned it. I kept quiet about it. I'm asking assistance from forest men now to help me retrieve missing people. To be real, I feel incredibly alone with the research that I've done. Now, I am incredibly grateful for a show like yours. I feel very much alone, but I feel very much a part of the community you've shown me. All right, well, there's a there's a, a short, clear-to-the-point share, and that's from Jack. Jack, uh, I appreciate what you've wrote, and obviously it's, um, obviously that's going to kick the curiosity factor into gear for all of us listening to your words, right? So you're not alone. Nobody's alone anymore, and if you would like to share a little more about what you've been into and what you've learned... Um, I'm curious, and I'll guarantee you numerous other people here are curious as well. So email back with whatever you got and share away. I wouldn't, you don't have to say where, say what your name is. But if you've gained some knowledge that you feel would help numerous people here fill in some holes in their puzzles, their personal puzzles, then uh, I think it would be absolutely appreciated if you, uh, if you shared a lot more of what you got. All right, man? Or not. It's up to you. This, but this is the round table of knowledge, and this round table is the size of the planet. Please keep this anonymous, thank you. Alrighty, I will. Hi Steve, I'm listening to your hunt story since before you started on Sasquatch stuff. All of it is great, and please keep it up. Alright man, thanks for the kind words and encouragement. No question is helping lots of folks, including myself. I've been a somewhat skeptical on the whole Sasquatch deal, but always open to the possibility. I've been hunting and fishing since I was a kid, and I've logged many hours in the woods. I consider myself pretty in tune with my surroundings and can read the woods pretty well. Let me add to my story. Your recent email on the guy's experience on Falls Lake and Rally pushed me enough to share, so thank you for that. Here it is. Number one. Several years ago, I found a nice chunk of public land adjacent to Falls Lake and started deer and squirrel hunting there. I had good luck, and my two boys and I squirrel hunt and look for mushrooms there frequently. On one occasion during the fall in 2019, I was there with my 12-year-old, and we heard two distinct tree knocks about 100 yards away, and I know there was no human in that direction because the woods are open hardwoods, and you can see that far. My kids watch BFR occasionally for laughs, so we heard of the new knock phenomenon. Even my kids realized those guys are idiots. My son looked at me when we heard the first knock and said, Sasquatch! We laughed, and so I said, yep. About five minutes later, we heard another knock in the same place. We looked at each other and I said, it's definitely a Sasquatch. That was a joke. Nothing else happened other than us seeing zero game that day. So we kind of brushed it off and joked with my wife and other son when we got home that we heard some Sasquatch knocks. Number two. This past January, my two sons and I went to the same block squirrel hunt. As we got 200 yards into the woods, I got the feeling we are being watched. We normally split up and set 100 yards apart to hunt squirrels. The feeling in my gut was so strong I was physically looking for someone in the woods. They didn't see anything. 
I asked my kids if they felt weird, and they said, not really. So I checked my feeling, but it was so bad that I told my 10-year-old that if he saw anyone in the woods, to come to my spot 100 yards away. I felt like there was some kind of terrible presence in the woods, just hard to describe. So anyway, we split up and the woods were just dead. No birds or anything. But 10 minutes later, my son shows up and said he just had a weird feeling, and let's go home. I said, let's go, and we started walking out. But halfway to the truck, right where I felt whatever it was, the strongest, we ran into a terrible wet dog, rotten smell that I've never run into there over the course of 30 plus hunts. We walked on to the truck and got through the smell. The stench was not there and we walked in on the exact same path 30 minutes later. In hindsight, I've encountered that same smell many, many times over the years while in the woods, but never been able to attribute it to anything. Sometimes you just run into it and it's like, damn, there's that stink ass, where's that stink ass smell coming from? Maybe now I have an idea. Here's the kicker. Back in the False Lake email, Falls Lake email, I know exactly where the dam is, where the gentleman had rocks thrown at him, his boat, and saw something across the channel. The block of woods we hunch is within two miles of there. Well, that's it. I felt compelled to share after hearing I'm not the only one having experiences from Fall Lake. Thanks for the outlet. The subject isn't an easy one to bring up in conversation, as we all know, so it feels good to unload it here, and as it's been on my mind a lot, wondering what the F is going on these days in the woods. Thank you, ND. Okay, man, thanks for that. And uh, your email is just exactly what most of us anticipate coming in after sharing other people's experiences, right? Everybody's listening now. Everybody's listening. And uh, when people share exactly where they were, um, if there's obviously things going on in those areas, people are going to hear it and go, bingo, I've been there too, and I've seen and heard that too. So, And um, I've said this how many times? If you are seeking out this channel, if you're seeking out information which directs you to this channel YouTube, and then you click on this channel, and then you go out of your way to find the email address to contact me and share the world through me, you already know what, what it was. You know what it is. You know what it was. <laughs> right? You're just looking for some sort of confirmation. Poor fellow, fellow uh, people in your community who have seen or heard or smelt the same thing in the same zone, which you have, right? So... Go with your instincts. Keep the kids safe. Keep the dogs on a leash. Bring the dogs. Let them, let them warn you. Keep learning here and keep sharing here. Share my story, howtohunt.com, or tell my story, howtohunt.com. You keep emailing it here, and it's going to keep getting shared to the world, as it should. It's word for word, all right? Anyway, so i got to start heading home. I think i got about five hours to get home. And uh, I'm ready to get up before I get a half a dozen ticks in my ass. <laughs>